In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about how Transys handles external data files. One way is like a weather data file. We're reading sequential data. The component to use there is type 9, and this video is not going to deal with type 9. The other way is as a way of obtaining performance data from a manufacturer. I've grabbed type 987, which is a fan coil there will be an external files tab here. If you click on that, you'll see the external files and this is what they're gonna look like. They've got a block of numbers at the top that is in a row. And then below that, there's a block of numbers that are more columnar in a sequence. We're gonna break down what's in this file. The first thing I wanna show you is a one dimensional lookup table. We've got some values that we know and we will look up values that correspond to those values. So let's say we went in with the value two, we would want to come out with the value five. We went in with the value five, we want to come out with the value eight. It's a very simple one-to-one -one lookup. If we come in here with a value of five and a half, we'd like it to come back with a value of eight and a half. This thing can interpolate. The way that Transys represents this data file is like so. As with most data files in Transys, as with most input files in Transys, it's text-based. And we have these values, which we're gonna call the independent variable values. The independent variable values are the values we're going into the lookup table with. We're gonna put those across a row at the top of the data file. The values that we're coming back with, five, six, seven, eight, nine, et cetera, those we're gonna to refer to as the dependent variables. And we're gonna put those in a column. Let's take a look at a two-dimensional data file. We know these values, and we know these values, and we want to find a value that corresponds to this pair of independent values. So if we go into this lookup file, we want to come in with a value of 6, and we want to come in with a value of 20. We want to come out with a value of 4343. Three. All these numbers are completely random. They're just for the sake of this example. The way that this would look in Transys's representation is like so. Again, across the top, we have the values of our two independent variables. If you look, here's this row of values. This row of values is going to be represented again as a row 10, 20, 30, 40. And then our dependent variable values for 14, 35, etc., are going to be represented in a column. So We've got a value of 2, 10. The corresponding value is 4. That'll be the first number that you see here. Then we go to 20. We'd come back with a value of 14.35. In the lookup table in Excel, 220 comes back with a value of 14.35. 230 is going to come back with a value of 45. And 240 is going to come back with a value of 567. Then we switch to 3, 10, 3, 20, 3, 30, 3, 40, etc. So that's the structure of the data file. We sometimes want more than one dependent variable. So a data file like that might look something like this. We've got the same independent variables across the top, independent variable 1 and independent variable 2. But now we're going to look up two different things. So we might, with 220, that corresponds to this row here, 1435 and 3.1. There's no particular limit to how many dependent values you can look up. We just put them sequentially, either space or tab separated. Let's look at a more realistic data file. This is a data file for a particular fan coil model, and it has four independent variables. That becomes very difficult to visualize in Excel. Really, in a spreadsheet, you can only visualize two dimensions. But this one has four dimensions, and conceptually it works the same. We've got four incoming independent variables. In this case, this data file, we're going to come in with normalized fluid flow rate, normalized air flow rate, inlet fluid temperature, and inlet air dry bulb temperature. And we're going to be looking up one value as a function of these independent variables. Back to transis now. Here's a, a model. It's a boiler. It has an external file. This one has two independent variables. 
inlet temperature and part load ratio. And it's looking up two dependent variables as a result. So if we look at the parameters tab, there's this parameter called logical unit for data file. Every time you have an external data file, it's going to be assigned an integer value as a parameter. Transys assigns these internally. All you need to know is that if you see this logical unit, it'll be grayed out, meaning it's automatically set, and that should tip you off that there's something to look for in the external files tab. The other thing that we have to specify as parameters, the number of values of the independent variables that appear in the data file. Now, what does that mean? You remember, if we look back at that data file, the two independent variables were inlet temperature and part load ratio. In each case, we need to specify how many values of inlet temperature there are and how many values of part load ratio there are. If we count these up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, there are eleven input temperatures, inlet temperatures. We have to specify that as a parameter here. How many inlet temperatures do we have? We have eleven. How many part load ratios do we have? We have two. One, two. We don't need to specify how many dependent variable values there are because that's built into this component. So if we run this simulation, it's not going to do anything interesting but there it runs now if i were to go in here and say oh well i've got three part load ratios and i try and run this same simulation i'm going to get an error and the error is going to tell me i had a problem reading the data stored in this data file and it's guessing that it may have specified the incorrect number of independent variable values because that's one of the most common errors if in fact we want to have three part load ratios, what we would need to do is modify this data file such that it has three values of part load ratio. I have created a data file here that has that. It's still got our same 11 input inlet temperatures, but now I've got three part load ratios instead of just two. And the difference you'll see is that there are lots more lines in this data file because we've got to have values to correspond to each one of these new cases. You see this data file here is rather short, whereas the modified one is a good bit longer. Something to bear in mind when you're creating these data files. What I've got here is a very generic component. This is in the standard HVAC library under conditioning equipment. And it's a more generic form of these components that use an external data file. Again, you'll see these same basic features, logical unit that tips me off that there's an external file involved the number of independent variables, the number of dependent variables. In this case, because it's a generic component, not a specific component, we do have to tell it how many variables there are, not just how many values of the independent variables there are. Let's take a look at this data file. We've got one independent variable, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six values of it. And there are two dependent variables that we're getting back from. Notice the limits of the independent variable. The independent variable goes from 0 to 50. We already discussed this component will interpolate. So if we come in with a value of 45 and we're looking at the value of the first dependent variable, we're going to get a value that's halfway between 52 and 64. However, what happens if we come in below 0 or above 50? Well, this component can interpolate, but it cannot extrapolate. It doesn't know what happens out here, so it's just going to keep returning this value. If we run this project, I've used the built-in variable time, and that just means we're going to go from zero to whatever the end of the simulation is. And based on what's in this data file, we would expect that as soon as we get above time equals 50, we're going to keep seeing an output variable of 64. That's precisely what I've set up here. I have an online plotter and I'm just looking at the value of the first dependent variable. I'll run the simulation, and here we go. As time progresses, we're seeing an interpolated value of the output of that dependent variable, but as soon as we get to time equals 50, it gets stuck at 64. It can't extrapolate. How do you know if that's occurred during your simulation? If you look at the simulation result file, we didn't get any errors, but we did get one warning. A warning is something that may be a problem, 
may not, you should know about it though. The warning here says, hey, during this simulation, type 42-1, et cetera, was called 70% of the time with the first independent variable above the range supplied in the data file. It might be something you might wanna go and look at. It might be something that is not a problem at all. Where this becomes a problem is in the case of a heat pump, and I'm gonna take a look at the cooling performance file. You can see that one of the independent variables here is the entering liquid water temperature. And one of the dependent variables here is cooling capacity. Well, if we come in here with something below 10 degrees C, we are still gonna get 1.016 times the rated cooling capacity. If we come in here with an entering liquid temperature of minus 1,000 degrees C, we're still gonna get that same capacity. A real life heat pump, of course, does not have any capacity, any ability to provide cooling if the entering liquid temperature goes below freezing. So be aware of that. That's where this kind of thing can turn into a problem.